Hey YouTube, Andrew back again with another video. I have the pen, I've got the Dell XPS 12. Let's find out if this is a buy or a don't buy. So here's the Dell XPS 12 with the Dell XPS or the active pen by Dell which I had to purchase separately. It's a $50 purchase. Uh, I will put the link below where you can buy that. A, I did get a 10% discount from Dell. Look for coupons online. You may be able to get even more off. So shipping took about a week. I was able to get it. What makes this unique as opposed to say the Lenovo Mix 700 and other devices, this actually uses Bluetooth technology, as well as the Wacom technology, which it also uses on the uh, Lenovo Mix 700. But this actually does have a pen eraser on top to which you can use as a button to activate OneNote and to take screenshots. So just to get an idea of the pen real quick, here it is. And it's very stylish. It's got that metallic gray to match the Dell XPS line, especially the Dell XPS 12. It's got the eraser on the top. Okay. And when you click it, you activate OneNote. And there it is on the background. Now, we'll get into the pen in a little bit, but it is very good, and it does come with a quadruple A battery, which a lot of these pens use, and it also comes with two batteries, or very small watch-style batteries, or pen light batteries, that will control the Bluetooth. So, it is comes in the package, so again, so far working very good. It is a separate accessory, unlike the Lenovo Mix 700, where you have it in the box, so just to keep that in mind. Now, the keyboard dock, which we'll get to in a minute, also has a pen loop for the pen, so that works pretty good. Now, it is also magnetic on the side of the tablet, so it does magnetically stick, or it's supposed to, at least, like that. Now, it's not a strong magnet, not, not nearly like the Surface Book or the Surface Pro 4, so I wouldn't put it there. I think it will fall off. Definitely use the loop that comes in the keyboard dock. Now, speaking of the tablet, I'm going to take it out. It has a 12 and a half inch, 16 by 9, 1080p display. Now, this does come in a 4K UHD resolution as well. I elected to go with the 1080p display for the simple reason of battery life. Now, we'll get to battery life in a moment, but uh, so far, I'm very pleased with the screen. The screen, I feel, is pretty good. And one, one thing I really love about this XPS line is the minimal bezels, as you can see around the screen. And compared to, say, the Lenovo Mix 700, this is a lot nicer, in my opinion. Now, it does have the 16 uh, by 9 aspect ratio, so this will be very good for viewing YouTube, Netflix, or any kind of media, so that'll be really nice. Now, some might not like the minimal bezels, simply when it's a touch screen as a tablet, it might get in the way. I didn't find that. As far as the screen is concerned, it does have, it does get very bright, and let me make sure I'm on the full brightness. Right now I'm at 60%, now here's a 50%, 75%, here's 100%. It does get very bright. As far as the brightness is concerned, it does get to 413 nits, which is higher than the, the Lenovo Mix 700, and it also is higher than the Surface Pro 4, believe it or not. So, very good brightness levels on this device, and we'll get to the Crystal Mark disc in a moment, but again, as far as the screen is concerned, it is a winner. Now, as far as the keyboard dock, it has one fixed position, and it has a backlight, which uh, unlike the Lenovo Mix 700, it doesn't have a backlight. This, like the Surface Type Cover, it does. it is backlit. It does have different levels of brightness, and it does work very well. As far as the key travel, I believe it has 1.2 millimeter key travel, and it is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, taking it out of the dock, as you can see here, Keys are well spaced out, and it has good, good, nice clicky sound. Now, as far as the trackpad is concerned, it actually is very good. It's very responsive. It's got a good, nice click to it. It does feel responsive. Gestures work well with it. Overall, this is a very good keyboard solution. It's solid construction. It has that nice finish in the back. It almost has like a, a grippiness to it, which is pretty nice. It is a fingerprint magnet, just so you know and it does work well. Now, one negative with this keyboard case is the fact that it only has one fixed position. 
And unlike the Surface Pro 4, it only has this one fixed angle. You cannot go beyond this angle. And for lapability concerns and for using this in bed, this doesn't work. It didn't work for me at least. Uh, I had to take it out of the dock and use it in tablet mode. But as far as using it in the keyboard dock, well, it wasn't the best solution in terms of in the bed or in the lap. Now, it did work well on the table. The, the angle is very good. So the, the one angle you do get is very good. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Dell recently addressed this issue in a new product they're gonna ship, which is a different keyboard case than the one you get in the box like this, except it'll have a keyboard and one with a kickstand, and that'll compete more on the Surface Pro 4 type cover level than, than, than this. So as far as that is concerned, that has not been released as of yet. And the last time I've checked, it was not released. I've been on the lookout for it. So if I can get my hands on one anytime soon, I will update you on how that will work. But right now you're stuck with this Keyboard, not stuck, it is good, don't get me wrong, but you do not have any adjustable angles like you'd get on a type cover. Or like you get on the Lenovo Mix 700 or the uh, HP Spectre X2. So it's just something to keep in mind. Now another note about the keyboard that I thought I would mention, there is one other little issue that I've had. Now sometimes when you're taking it out of the dock and then putting it back in, if you don't align it just right, the keyboard will not connect. Now the keyboard connects via these pogo pins right here and it goes into the keyboard slot over there. I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. Now when you do put it in, if you don't align it just right, it doesn't sort of clicks in magnetically, you will not get the keyboard to work. And see right now I don't have it working. So I have to move it to the side a little bit, try to get it again, and there I heard the connection being made. So right now it seems to be, doesn't seem to be working. So let me try it again. Again, I have to do this a few times. Eventually I did get it right. It doesn't always happen, but something to keep in mind with this keyboard dock. It has been an issue for me, and I don't know if this is a design defect or the one I just have, but I did notice this and it is a little bit of an annoyance. So just keep that in mind as well. Now, as far as weight is concerned, it does weigh 1.75 pounds without the keyboard dock. And with the keyboard dock, it weighs 2.8 pounds. So it's a nice thin package. It does have a little heft to it, but it does travel nicely. The magnets do stay in place, keeping it together, but it is 2.8 pounds with the T keyboard dock connected. So a little bit on the heavy side as far as I'm concerned. As far as thinness, it looks pretty good. And as you can see here, now let's go over some of the ports real quick. As you can see here, there's the volume rocker up and down. You have the micro SD card slot, which comes out of its latch right there. And it does sit flush with the device, so that's always good. You have two USB type C uh, connections here and one is also for the charge. I think both of these will charge the device if I'm not mistaken and it also is a Thunderbolt out. On the front of the device you have two array microphones are. Uh, as far as the other side is concerned you have a Kensington lock port on that side, the power button on that side and on the back of the device there's nothing um, you have your webcam on the back. I'll put all the specs. I didn't really test it out too much. There's the back camera and then you have the front webcam. They all work pretty good. Uh, again, I wouldn't be taking pictures with this or taking photos with this, but they do work. As far as the pen is concerned, this doesn't disappoint. And I'm gonna demonstrate with one note. This is a test of one note. And it looks pretty good. Now, let's take a look real quick at the hover. Now, one issue I had with the Lenovo Mix 700 is that it didn't register right away. Here, it registers pretty quickly. And I don't know if you can see that. Now, the other thing I like about this is that it also has 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity. The Lenovo Mix 700, I think, only has 1024. So that I'm not really sure on, but I can tell you between the these two devices, I definitely prefer the pen of the Dell XPS 12, the Dell Active Stylus. It works very good in terms of pressure sensitivity. Also, the hover 
issue is not here on this device, it does work well. So that's something to keep in mind when considering for you note takers, for you digital artists, something to take into mind. Now, I want to test something else out. Let me close that. Let me go one note. Let me go to paint. Okay, so I'm going to do the paint app and I just want to draw a diagonal line across the screen. And it's pretty good. I, I don't have such a steady hand, but it looks pretty good. So pretty good pen. I think this is a good solution. Now, another thing to keep in mind about the pen, unlike the Lenovo, Mix 700, it does have an eraser on the top, and when you click on it, it activates OneNote. Well, at least it should activate OneNote. Let me do it again, and there it is. Now, it does work well. You do have to pair it up, and there is software you have to download from Dell, as far as drivers are concerned. There is a program that is on here for that. It is a program that you download from Dell, and as you can see here, it does allow you to enter presentation mode, which is good for PowerPoint presentations. It does allow the single click launch for OneNote. It does allow the double click screenshot to OneNote. So a lot of extra functionality with the pen top on this. I like that. So you do have some control over the sensitivity of it. Let me open that again, just to show you real quick. And there you have the slider for that. And you can slide it there, slide it there. I like to keep it towards the front as far as sensitivity. You can also click hard press to double click. You can do that as well. So you have a lot of options with this pen over say the Lenovo Mix 700. This is more akin to the Surface Pen than it is to the Lenovo Mix 700's pen. And as you can see from the Geekbench test results, it did a 1932 with a single core score and a 3085 for the multi-core score. Now this is the Core M5 with eight gigabytes of RAM and a 256 gigabyte SSD. Now speaking of the SSD, I was a little disappointed. I didn't get the write speeds that I really wanted on this. The read and write speeds were not that good compared to say the Lenovo Mix 700. Take a look at Crystal Disk Mark results and have a look for yourself. As you can see from the read and write speeds, I was a little disappointed. It did a 525 on the read and it did a, only a 121.7 on the write in terms of the first test. Now, that's not good. When I did the same test on the Lenovo Mix 700, it did a 551.7 and a 301.4 on the write. So read did 551.7 and the write did a 301.4, more than double the Dell XPS 12. So not, not good on the SSD. I'm going to ding Dell on that one. Now to test the sound of the Dell XPS 12, let's take a listen to our recent review of the Lenovo Mix 700. Is it a buy or a don't buy? Check out that video to see if we gave that a thumbs up or not. Well, here's the Dell XPS 12 with its front facing firing speakers. Body Andrew back again with another video and today we have our review of this baby, the Lenovo Mix 700, a two-in-one Surface Pro 4 competitor. Let's find out if this has what it takes to become the king of the two-in-ones. Let's find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. As you can see, it sounded pretty good. Nice, full sound. Volume doesn't get that loud, although I've, ha I've seen worse, I've heard worse. It does have a nice, rich sound, just the volume doesn't get that loud. Overall, decent speakers on the XPS 12. Not the greatest I've ever heard, but not the worst either. So overall, what do I think about the Dell XPS 12? Is it a buy or a don't buy? I'm gonna have to say it's a buy. I like its 12 and a half inch IPS 1080p display, which is also available in a 4K UHD version, but although you will take a hit on the battery life. It has excellent viewing angles. It has excellent brightness. It gets even brighter than Surface Pro 4. And it really is very color rich and very good color accuracy. As far as the pen is concerned, I like the fact that it does have extra functionality when you compare it to say the Lenovo Mix 700. You have the pen on the top here, which will, when you depress it, will activate OneNote. And if you hold it down for an elongated period of time, it will take a screenshot and send that to OneNote. Also, again, a nice touch. Oh, and speaking of the pen, Pen does work very well. It's got 2,048 levels of pressure sensitivity. When I tested it with OneNote, 
tested it with Microsoft Paint and other applications, it did very well. So good job on the pen, Dell. Now, this is not included in the, in the box, in the package that I got. I had to buy this as a separate $50 or so accessory. Actually, I paid less than $50. I had a 10% coupon from Dell. Keep your eyes on the lookout for any kind of coupon. You can get this probably cheaper. They did ship it within a week. So good job, Dell, as far as getting it to me as soon as they could. Now, as far as the pa overall package, I like the fact that it comes with this folio keyboard case. It's got a cloth material. It does really hold up well. I've already spilled something on it and there's no sign of any stain or anything. So very good job, Dell, as far as craftsmanship. It does, and the fact that they throw this in the box is also a nice touch. I also like the keyboard that they attach to this. Now, the keyboard, as you can see here, is backlit and it has very good key travel. As we stated, it has 1.2 millimeter key travel. And it did very well in terms of typing and having nicely spaced out keys. Now, what don't I like about it? Well, it only has one fixed viewing angle. And unlike the Surface Pro 4, the Surface Pro 3, or even the Surface 3 with that kickstand, which allows for multiple viewing angles, this has only one fixed viewing angle. So you can forget about using this in bed and on your lap it didn't quite get the right angle that I wanted. But on a table or on a desk, it did work as advertised and it did have a good viewing angle. The one viewing angle did work very well. Now, unlike the Lenovo Mix 700, this doesn't also doesn't have the kickstand, but there is a case that Dell will be releasing very shortly that will have a kickstand built in and a very slim keyboard to attached to it. But I haven't checked it out yet. It has not been released. If I can get my hands on it, I will test it and give you an update. Now, as far as this compared to the Lenovo Mix 700, uh, that one has a kickstand akin to the Surface Pro line with its uh, beautiful multi-viewing angle. So keep that in mind. As far as battery life is concerned, uh, I was a little bit disappointed. I was expecting anywhere from seven to eight hours. This is not the 4K display version. This is the 1080p version. I thought that that extra resolution was the reason that many people were not getting good battery life on the 4K UHD version. Unfortunately, this I did on normal usage. Screen turned to, to about 60%, 70%. I was able to get five to six hours on this. I think specifically I got 550 maybe. I got closer to six hours. But the bottom line is on this, it's, it's okay battery life. Wasn't a deal breaker for me, but it wasn't the longest running device either. Now, as far as performance is concerned, it was a mixed bag. Uh, as far as the Core M processor for everyday tasks, browsing the web, watching YouTube videos, and not doing too many intensive specific tasks, it did okay. But I was a little disappointed on the read write speeds that I was getting, especially the write speeds. Uh, and especially when you compared it to the SSD of the Lenovo Mix 700, I was a little disappointed. But it wasn't a deal breaker either way. It still did well on overall tasks. It kept up pretty well on 2K viewing or any kind of 4K viewing, even though this only has a 1080p display. It did okay. Now, as far as 1080p, obviously you're watching YouTube videos in 1080p, it'll do fine. As far as video rendering, any Photoshop on this, it can handle it. Would I throw it at it? Probably not. There are better Core i5s, Core i7s that are out there that will do a better job than this. This is the mid-level Core M5. The Lenovo Mix 700 that I tested, and when you see the showdown, you'll see it has a Core M7. This version has eight gigabytes of RAM. It has a 256 gigabyte SSD. Again, I was a little disappointed on the SSD performance. Please hit the like button, please subscribe, and please share this video if you found it informative and you liked it. So stay tuned for the next review, which is the ASUS ZenBook Pro UX501 VW, the Dell XPS 15 competitor, and I'm looking forward to giving you that review. Check out the unboxing in the meantime. Until then, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya. <laughs>